Hey, welcome everybody. It's Friday again here in the Woodsmith shop. And frankly, everybody around here is feeling like that time after the holidays when all the relatives are gone, your trash cans are full, most of the presents are broken or lost, and you just don't know what to do anymore. So we're in a post Woodsmith workshop event let down a little bit. And the best part of it was is after the two day event, we came back on Wednesday with a magazine due date, which really felt more like another Monday. Yeah, and what a turn we have taken in the weather. So sure. Monday, to, so Sunday when we were setting up, it was pouring rain. Right. We had like an hour to get everything there and set up that wasn't raining. We did it. Yeah. Uh, nothing got terribly wet. And then Monday, the day of our event, was probably 90 degrees. 90 or 95 degrees, yeah. yeah. And it was super hot. Uh, Tuesday was better. Better, it was a little overcast, yep. but much cooler. Yep, supposed to have a chance of rain. And uh, the event finished up, which was great. Everybody left, and as we were loading stuff, it started raining, so we yeah. just barely beat the rain then. Yeah. Uh, and now it's like 50, 50 degrees out, yeah. uh, which is really nice. Nice turn of uh, the weather. So yeah, it's I was like fall now. I was walking the dog this morning and walked past a house that had the furnace running. Yeah. So we go from AC to furnace. Exactly. One in week. Less than a week. Yeah. yeah. So pretty impressive. For everybody who was there, thanks again for coming out and making it such a great event. I know I had a really good time. Yeah. What was your favorite part? Uh, let's see. What was my favorite part? Uh, I think it was just all the talking. I mean, there was a ton of woodworkers there, so it was yeah. fun to see the different projects that people were building. And yeah. I can't tell you how many times I saw people like showing smartphone photos off to other people. Yeah, so. yeah. I think I like the, uh, the community that it creates. You know, there was you know, about 130 of us there, um, yeah. and it's just really cool hanging out with people that enjoy uh, the same kind of things we do. Right, and uh, having. You know, Matt and Ann and Jim and George, George here, and just being able to hang out with everybody and, and spend two days teaching and learning and yeah. stuff was really cool. Just to highlight that, the, we had we provided lunch as part of the two day package, mm -hmm. and it was at a restaurant right adjacent to the venue. And the room that they had us in was a pretty big room. Yes. Had booths lining the sides, and what was it like six or seven big yeah. round yep. tables in the middle? And everybody was in the tables, sitting around, just yeah. talking and sharing yeah. stuff. And the booths were largely empty. Yeah, yep, that was uh, that was fun. So, anyway, we're back in the shop, mm -hmm. just kind of catching up on some things. So, what I'm going to do is we're going to have John turn around the pet bed that we were talking about. Steve had just kind of finished up on some stuff last week and was turning the legs for. Well, it's complete now. I wanted to give you a sneak peek of it before it goes into the magazine. So. There it is with its uh, bed, I guess, mattress yeah. on the inside. And you can see those curly maple uh, feet that Steve was turning. And I think they they turned out great. They did turn out great. It was interesting because the blanks were labeled as curly maple. Curly and there's maple. only one leg that has, that leg up there has a little bit of curl. Maybe, maybe a little yeah, bit. Just enough that you could call it curly. Yeah, curly maybe an air quote. Yes, exactly. You could call that. But it's so. cool. It's a cool bed. Uh, it'll be interesting to see whose dog gets photographed. Right. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. John, you're on the camera. Anything you learned from the event? Um. You just were behind the, the scenes. Yeah. yeah. No, we had a lot of fun. I was uh, super pumped to have all those um, presenters come in and and meet new people and they just get excited about you know going sharpening your tools and get back in the shop so yeah, yeah. nice yeah. all right let's head over take a look at mark he's got the empire chest not that empire it's uh the death star chest the death star yes. chest yes <laughs> hello everyone so we were gone monday and tuesday for the woodsmith workshop so jump back on this on wednesday got the plywood and the rest of it assembled so all of this is done on the table saw. Got these notches done on the, on the table saw on the dado blade. Uh, got the edging put on the plywood this morning. And that's what the finished product's gonna look like. So next week I'll work on the solid cherry top and get the drawers all made and put in. And then I'm gonna start turning. So looking forward to that. I think I'm also looking forward to doing that as well. <laughs> <Aren't you? laughs> 
So that's where I'm at with that. So it's coming along. Yeah, it looks good. I'm, I'm interested to see how the uh, split turning works out. Yes. For you. Just any turning. <laughs> <laughs> Are those going to be cherry as well? Are the turnings going to be cherry as well? Yeah, yeah, turnings are going to be cherry. Yeah, the, uh, the the cherry turnings, knobs, and top will be like a darker, I think a darker stain, so there'll be a little bit of contrast on it. So yeah. it'll be kind of cool. Mm -hmm. So that's all I've got for you this week. Check in next week and have more progress on it. Okay. Cool. So you were at the event, Mark. How did you feel it went? Well, I think it oh, went oh, super, super well. Um, I think my favourite moment of the whole event was one of the attendees who was standing at the back when you were speaking on stage and he referred to you as an evil genius, <laughs> which was kind of comical, so I'm like, yeah, that's, 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 that sums him up pretty well. Compliment. So. <laughs> See, my my favourite part was when I had to make Mark come back and give me clamps that I forgot. Uh, like um, Monday morning, first thing. <laughs> it's like, yeah. oh crap, I forgot something. It's 20, 20 past eight. Mm -hmm. The opening <laughs> ceremony started at nine. <laughs> and he comes up to me and says, Can you run back to the shop and get class? I'm like, Really? <laughs> but so, you made it! it was so perfect. how fast this truck goes. Yeah, yeah, rush out traffic. Perfect. So I made it back, so it's all good. Appreciate it. Yeah, no worries. So. Alright, let's head around for Chris, see what he's up to. Find where he is. He's throwing stuff. He's here. He's here. He's here. Fish just about to go back up on the wall. That's right. Hello, everyone. Fish is about to go up uh, on the wall again. We had a great time at the Woodsmith Workshop. If you can come out next year's, please do. It was fantastic. We had seven percenter, presenters, a lot of good programs. I talked about this fish. And if you're interested in the fish, there still is a video. Uh, Google Woodsmith makes carving a muskie. Mm -hmm. and you'll see what I was talking about for most of the weekend. But the best thing about the whole show is just to be able to say hello and shake hands with fellow woodworkers. You know, woodworking can be kind of an isolating experience sometimes in your shop. It was fantastic to be with other men and women who really have a passion for our hobby. So if you get a chance, be there next year. I'm also getting geared up to uh, fire up the CNC's, make lots of noise, and work on a few product uh, prototypes, so I hope that next week I'm going to have a few things to show you. See, I noticed you have a CNC pulled apart. Is there some preventative maintenance going on in there? Yeah, I need to, re I need to replace the uh, any backlash nut within it. Oh, that, sure. That machine is several years old and they're just Delrin, pieces of Delrin in yeah, the spring. Got a little slop in them. Yeah, so I'm kind of going back through and piping and tuning before I start uh, cutting some yeah. aluminum and plywood and such. Sure. What was uh, any interaction that you had about your specific session that kind of surprised you? Because I know I heard from several people who thought like, you know, if I had to choose, I wouldn't have gone to the fish carving one. But that once they went through it, they thought it was one of their favorite parts. Well, I think I think I think that was sort of my observation too. That you know, we tend to we tend to sort of block ourselves into I'm just a furniture builder, or I'm just a turner, or I'm just a wood carver. But really, all of the different facets of woodworking cross at one point or the other. So if you love furniture, you'll probably find a time when you wish you could carve a little detail or do a little marketure, add a little turning. So it's all great information, it's all valuable, and it's just a real thrill to learn. Yeah, cool. So I don't have too much to report on what I'm going on. Uh, I'm still working on my table project. I've got a couple of legs and stretcher things glued up and I'm gonna start shaping on that. The top, as you saw last week, is in great shape. Um, got three coats sprayed on it, and I think it's gonna stand out pretty well. So, uh, this just in. <laughs> well, not just in, it was in about, uh, oh. what, an hour ago? About, yeah. So we got a uh, little care package thrown on my desk from the UK, uh, from our friends over in the UK, from uh, I believe Workshop Haven. Yeah. Um, they sent us some new samples of uh, Alfie Shine, which happens to be one of my favorite wax finishes. Um, I use it mainly on my uh, anti camp lanes, but they uh, have changed it. The original formula has some frankincense in it. It smells really good, kind of uh, uh, Christmassy. Yeah, Christmassy a little bit. Um, <laughs> it smells really, really nice. Um, however, uh, they've released a fragrance free uh, formula. And this is for use, it's a hard wax polish, it's for use on uh, 
food utensils or stuff that'll be in contact with food. Uh, so serving trays, cutting boards, spoons, stuff like that. Um, so they sent me a bunch of these guys. Uh, and we're gonna go ahead and give two of these away. So if you guys are interested in one, uh, just say I'm in, you know, whether you're on Facebook or on YouTube, and we will uh, pick, two at random. pick two at random, maybe next week. Yeah. So we'll, uh, now you use them on tools, but I mean, it, it's furniture polish. Too. It is, yeah. it is. And this stuff's cool because it is a wax uh, polish, um, but there's resins in there that kind of build up and add some protection. So you can use it as a finish or you can use it as a polish. Uh, and it works well for either. Yeah, because um, sometimes paste wax, if you, you can use that as a standalone finish. You can. You got to get a couple of coats in there before you like fill the grain on the wet on the wood. Yeah, and, and it doesn't really harden real well. Yeah. This stuff does harden, which is, yeah. is nice. So what is the wax in it? Is it carnauba? <clears throat> uh, there, I believe it's carnauba. There's beeswax, frankincense, resins. Um, okay. I, when I uh, I wrote an article on this stuff a couple of issues back, um, and I, I got a big old story on how the uh, some of the ingredients are hard to get and stuff, um, but I do love this stuff. So uh, yeah, I got. And Jim's number, a great guy. And Jim's a good guy. He Matt's some, a good guy. Yeah. He makes uh, some pretty amazing tools. He does. And uh, it can be used as a wood turning finish. Um, absolutely. Um, so uh, we would love to give these away, and we got got quite a few of these from them. So yeah. maybe we'll do these a couple of times. Yeah, I know um, I have a couple of Christmas presents that could use a wax finish. Exactly. So, so and while, uh, while I'm talking real quick, uh, I do want to let people know, we understand that the audio on these lives is not the quality of audio we use on the show. Yes, lapel mics would be great, but you know what? We kind of do this for fun every Friday. We have a shotgun mic, a little fuzzy shotgun mic. You guys might be able to see, mm -hmm. uh, but we don't have lapel mics. We're not worried about audio that much on this. Uh, you guys can hear it. I've listened. We listened to every one of these when we're done with them. So um, this is for fun, and we're kind of wandering around talking to whoever's in here. So you know that audio is what it is in here. And we might upgrade the mic at some point. But. Isn't that John's uh, country band honky tonk stage name? Fuzzy little shotgun mic. I think it is. Yeah, that's a good one. Right. My drug so, band. Yeah. <laughs> And while we're at it, uh, is there anything else in here you had? I didn't know. Okay. Do you have anything? Uh, well, I wanted to do one more pitch for Bob's seminar. It's coming up uh, two weeks from yesterday, so it'll be on October 17th. Uh, our Woodsmith Live seminar this month will be uh, hosted by Bob Zimmerman, who is one of our senior Ill or graphic designers. Yep. Uh, and Bob does some different woodworking than what we do, so he will have an interesting take on his subject, which is my favorite cordless tools. So yeah. he's going to look at you know, a bunch of different cordless tools, what he uses, where he sees them being valuable, and maybe look at some history on them, which would be kind of fun. See yeah. the old you know, nine volt battery cordless <laughs> drill that has a battery that big, and now we have 24 volt batteries that are you know, super tiny. Yeah. I think that's the big thing, because I know that you know, for me, when I started with cordless tools, that you just think drill. And yeah. then some of the other ones come across as frankly giving. Yeah, they, they do, but they work <laughs> but really well. We've come across a few in the shop here that we use almost all the time that I totally never would have considered being a legitimate tool. Oh, yeah, well, so this guy, yeah, one of our favorite one, things. Yeah, it's a cordless 23 gauge pinner. Yeah. And I don't have room in my shop for an air compressor. No. And you don't want to listen to one anyway. No. And you don't want to, yeah, no, you don't no, want to listen to one anyway. No. But but well, and we used the 18 gauge one on that episode for the TV show where you built the workbench ends. Mm -hmm. You know, had the plywood panels and you yeah, do all those, you know. Worked great. Yeah. So anyway, Bob's kind of a DIYer. Yep. For home improvement stuff. Plus he does. This some on the side. Like uh, I think he works some weekends, does oh. some DIY stuff for, for people. For so, people, yeah. yeah. Plus he's into some model making and drones and things like that. So oh. yeah, lots of things that fly. So I mean, he uses a wide variety of tools. Yep. So I'm really excited about that. Not only can you sign up for that single event, but we have an all access pass for all of the seminars that we've done this year and for the rest of the year. So even though there's only three left, 
this year. Yep. If you sign up for that all access pass, you'll get all access to all of 2019 plus the six that we did last year too. So all together the 18 seminars and there's some really good information in there. Yeah, and if you guys have anything that you want to see in particular for seminars, we are just getting ready to do uh, some planning for our 2020 seminars. Yeah. Uh, so if there's anything in particular that you guys want to see or if there's a recurring theme that we're seeing, uh, we might consider adding that. Yeah, I got, a list. I got to have that listed down next week. So I'd love to hear your comments on that. So Chris, you got anything else? Any recommendations? <laughs> Go to the next Woodsmith Wood workshop. That's there we go. It was fun. All right. Yes. John, recommendations? Uh, nope. Nope. Okay. All right. All right. We'll end it there. All Thanks, right. everybody. See ya. See ya.